Welcome back to another exciting chemistry lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned how to memorize all the SI prefixes and their values, and then we also learned how to write conversion factors for each one of those SI prefixes using a fraction to represent a ratio. And now in this lesson, we are going to learn how to use those conversion factors from the SI prefixes to solve problems that convert between two SI units with prefixes. Before we do that, let's look at a very basic problem. In this case, what we have here is the conversion factors, okay, you notice how I have a one of the prefix equal to the values, and remember, E is equal to times 10 to the power of something. So in this case, 1 mega equal to 1 e to the 6, basically times 10 to the 6. Now let's look at this. How many quarters are in 25 nickels? This allows us to understand the values of conversion factor. And when we solve for conversion factor, what we have here is the solving strategy. You always start from your given. And you continue to multiply your conversion factors until you get to your final answer, which is exactly what we're looking for, to find from the 25 nickels. What we are trying to find, in this case, your quarters. How many quarters are in 25 nickels? So you are going to multiply the conversion factors as many as needed until you get to your quarters. And we use a term called desire, which is the one we're looking for. And one of the most challenging aspects is knowing which conversion factor to use. And here we have a list of conversion factors, but we don't know which one to use. And again, we always start with our given. What is our given? 25 nickels. So we have our 25 nickels, okay? Let me, let me write this over here first. We have 25 nickels, that's our given. And I'm gonna write everything in singular form to make sure everything is easy. So we have nickel right here. If this is nickel, one of our conversion factor must have nickels. And here's the reason why behind that. Because we want to cancel out. Remember in the back of the day when we have x divided by x, what's that going to equal to? Well, that simplify out into 1. And the same thing if we have x multiplied by 1 over x. Look what happened. The x cancel out. Simplify equal to 1 as well. And that's what we are going to do to all this unit, starting from our given. So in this case, which one has nickel as the unit? In this case, we have here nickel and quarter. Here we have nickel and dollar. And here we have nickel and penny. So which one are we going to choose? Of course, we want to choose the one has nickel and quarter in it. In this case, we have five nickels equal to one quarter. And why we are using nickel and quarter? Because we are looking for quarter. So we multiply that, right? And here's a question for you. Which one go on the bottom? If this were to be the ratios or the conversion factor, if I'm writing this conversion factor as a fraction, again, it's a ratio. So you have one quarter over five nickel. What is that? Or I can rewrite this as five nickel one quarter. Notice how I keep everything in single form, okay? So the question is, which one do I use? You don't have to worry about this aspect at all, because this right here from your given, it tells you which one go on the bottom. Remember, I want to cancel out my nickel. So of course, if we look at this conversion factor, it has two sides. One is for nickel and one is for quarter. So I want to cancel out nickel. So this side is going to be on the bottom, and I just copy exactly from here, from the conversion factor. Five nickel right there. Everything in singular form. And then if the nickel is on the bottom, the other part, which is the top part, the numerator, must be the leftover. In this case, is one quarter. And if we have nickel over nickel, look what happened. It cancel out equal to one. So in this case, what's left is your quarter. So all we have to do is multiply everything on top, divide everything on the bottom. And let's show you how to do that in the basic form using decimal calculator. We have 25 divided by 5. And the answer is 5, which is pretty easy. So we have 5 quarter. And notice how nickel is completely simplified and eliminate from 
the whole entire process. So that's all we have to do. And of course on Streamline Ed, we have this template for you. So you are going to type it in. Before we start, remember you have this in your notebook and here are the conversion factor. Let's look at this example. A car travel a distance of 5.7 kilometer. So again, this is the prefix kilometer. What is the distance travel in nanometer? And we know that nanometer is abbreviated by NM, okay? So we have two prefixes for two SI units. And what is our given? Of course, this right here is our given. And what are we looking for? We are looking for nanometer, okay? So how many nanometer are in 5.7 kilometer? So let's do this. So always start from your given. So we have 5.7, okay? And what is it? 5.7 kilometer. Notice how I just copy down the given exactly from the problem. And time or conversion factor. Now, it's not like the previous problem where we give the conversion factor straight off in terms of a ratio for you. Here we had to figure out from our prefixes. So what do we know about km, which is kilometer, and nanometer? Well, we know the prefix k is equal to time 10 to the third. So I can rewrite this as a conversion factor. We have 1 km is equal to 1 e3, which is time 10 to the third meter. Okay, we have our first conversion factor with k and meter. But what about nanometer? We also know about nanometer right here, which in this case, one nanometer is equal to time 10 to the negative nine. So I can rewrite that one nanometer equal to what? One e negative nine meter. And we learned this from our previous lessons, right? Now let's look at this. Which conversion factor do I multiply first? Well, it's very obvious because our given is kilometer. So we have to multiply this one with our kilometer. In this case, what's going to go on the bottom? It's going to be the kilometer. So we have 1 km. Notice how I copy exactly from the conversion factor. Okay. If this side's on the bottom, because we need to cancel that out, the top part must be the leftover. In this case, 1 e 3 meter. Boom, we're done. Now kilometers cancel out. So we need to multiply to another conversion factor until we get to our desired unit, which in this case is nanometer. So we multiply that in this case, which one's going to be on the bottom? Well, this is meter right here, right? So if we look at this conversion factor. We have nanometer and meter. Of course, now with this conversion factor, the meter is going to be on the bottom. So 1 e to the negative 9. Remember, e is time 10 to the power of something, right? Meter. If this is on the bottom right here, the top part must be the leftover, which in this case, 1 nanometer. And look what happened, meter cancel out. And our answer is what? It's in nanometer, which is the only thing that's left there. Okay, so now we have to figure out the number that go here. Well, that's pretty easy because we can use a calculator. So using decimal calculator, all we have to do is multiply everything on top and divide every single number on the bottom. So let me show you. We have 5.7, okay? Multiply by e to the 3 and remember that is time 10 to the power of something time 10 to the power of 3 and What about the 1 nanometer? Well, we can ignore that because just multiply by 1 Well, let's do that and then we have our answer. That's the top part now We are going to divide everything on the bottom So the way we use decimal calculator is this click on answer and we divide by 1 which we can ignore Okay so we now divide by e to the negative 9 divided by 10 to the power of negative 9. And our answer is 5.7 to the 12th. So in this case, remember we had to write in terms of e. So we have 5.7 e 12. And remember this e right here is time 10 to the power of something. In this case, it's 12. And that's all we have to do. Ready to try another problem? So as you can see, this is a little bit more complicated than the one with quarter and nickels, right? Let's try another problem. Let's try another problem. A liter of gasoline produced 35 megajoules. How much energy in millijoules was released from one liter of gasoline? So notice how we have a liter and one liter of gasoline. That's just there just to trick you. 
because we're asking between millijoules and megajoules. So we can cross that out. And using the same strategy, right, we always start from our given. This right here is our given. And we're looking for millijoule. We always start from our given, in this case, is 35 megajoules. And before we start multiplying any conversion factor, we have to realize, what do we know about megajoules? Well, we know that for megajoules up here, okay, for megajoules up here, this mega right here, is one mega is equal to time 10 to the 6. So I can rewrite that as one megajoules is equal to what? 1 e to the 6 joule. And we did this before, right? Uh, in our previous lesson. Now, what else do we know about this problem? Well, we also know that the prefix millijoule, millijoule is right here. 1 mil is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative third. So in this case, I can rewrite this as another conversion factor. 1 millijoule is equal to 1 e to the negative 3 joule. And now we have two conversion factors about the unit in our problem. Notice how we have two SI prefixes. So the leftover part is just now figured out which conversion factor do we multiply by first. In this case, we have megajoules. So we have to multiply the one with megajoules, which in this case is this one right here. And to figure out which one go on the bottom, that's pretty easy. This one determine the one go on the bottom. So this megajoule down here must be megajoule. So I copy exactly one megajoule. Now what's the leftover? Well, in this case, the leftover is this one right here. So it's one e to the six joule. And look what happened to megajoule, it cancel out. It simplify into one. And we are pretty much done with that part, but we still got stuck in joule. But the next thing we have to do is is now figured out what is the next conversion factor that we multiply to cancel out joule. Well, we have this right here, right? Which is between millijoule and joule. So we multiply that conversion factor and look at this. This is joule, so this has to be on the bottom. So one e to the negative three joule. And what's the top part, the leftover? So we have one millijoule. And look what happened, the joule cancel out. And all we have is what? Well, the answer is going to be in joule, isn't it? And we have to figure this out by using our calculator. So let's do that. In this case, multiply everything on top and divide every single digit on the bottom. So we have 35, okay, times 1 e to the 6. Remember, that is times 10 to the power of 6 right there. And then multiply by 1, which we can ignore. And now we're done with the top part divided by the bottom part. So again, click answer, divided by the bottom part, which in this case, what we have, we can ignore the one. And again, this is one e to the negative three. That's basically times 10 to the power of negative three. And our answer is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 10, or in this case, 3.5 e 10. So again, 3.5 e 10. And remember this e right here is times 10 to the power of something. And that is how you use the values of SI prefixes to get conversion factor to convert from one SI unit with a prefix to another SI unit with a prefix. And now is your turn to try the problem on streamline.com. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand and work with your partners.